Got to start recording a lot of matches since can't get mine back. So yeah, I'll see if uh, someone can jump in the booth here for a little bit while I uh, take care of some personal business, guys. But I'll let you know. I'm good for about 15 minutes. All right, who do you guys like in this match? Lewis has been bugging me to get him on the stream all week. I apologize for not getting him on his birthday, uh, but I wasn't uh, I wasn't uh, picking the matches. Uh, today we are gonna do a poll. We're gonna let you guys pick our matches for the TV table. So I believe we have Clat and Thomas uh, later on. Um, and I think I am going to stream the Alex Peggy Lyon snooker match tonight. Give me a sec, guys. I'm just going to go and take a look at the uh, schedule of events for tonight. See what uh, matches I can throw up there for you guys to pick. Alrighty. All right, so it looks like uh, 9 p.m. I was taking a look at the snooker board. I just got to see what table they're going to be on, guys. Uh, I'm going to get you the Alex Peggy line match tonight. I wouldn't type that, that your keys are sticking. Some people may take that the wrong way. Alrighty, we're teeing off here. Let me uh, get that start time out of the way. Yeah, so when I have to step away, uh, I know Rob is trying to get some action going. If not, Rob's going to jump in the booth and uh, Rob Sakal is going to talk to you guys for a little bit. <clears throat> Much appreciated. Real nice guy. We've been talking a lot since he's been here. I. Uh, he Ah, hillbilly, my buddy. What is going on, my friend? Good morning. Or good afternoon. We just started. This is some B-side action. This is going to be a good match. Lewis is a great shooter. And I'm very good today, buddy. It was a late night. Uh, I went to bed. It was about 5 a.m. Had to work on all the problems we had yesterday. Uh, we've been up and running really strong today. So I think we're going to be all good, my friend. I opened up about 18 million Ustream accounts last night. So uh, if anything happens, I got 18 million more sites that I'm going to use. So we're good, buddy. All right, this is Lewis at the table. Uh, give me one sec. Chris.
No problem. I got your back, buddy. Alrighty. Uh, figured it out. Once I step away here, uh, Chris Wood is going to jump in the mic and do some commentating for you. Hey, he's a former Canadian nine ball champ. He actually uh, broke his virginity doing some snooker commentating. And he did a great job. Very smart player. So, uh, Chris. <clears throat> Chris is going to jump in. Uh, Rob is currently looking for some action. So as soon as I get uh, the call that my buddy's outside, I just got to step away for a minute there, Coop. Just, uh, he's got some information for me about the stream and all that stuff. So I'm just going to step out for about 15 minutes and just take care of that uh, once I get that call. And then uh, Chris Wood is going to jump on the mic and give you a bit of commentary, guys. Former Canadian nine ball and snooker champion. I'm sure you guys want to hear his insight. Uh, okay, I, Rob, you got action. Coop, go see Coop. Yeah. He says awesome. <laughs> He's laughing at you, Coop. All right, Lois, I'll talk to you soon, girl. All right, you know I'm going to get Chris in the booth right now. Go and get him his coffee. All right, everybody. Chris Wood's going to jump on the mic. I'm going to go and take care of my business. Talk to you soon. Hello, folks. Chris Wood here at ringside with my fellow players, Nello, Tyler Neary, and uh, some Filipino guy here. S smile on his face. And, uh... <laughs> We're fortunate enough to have a uh, feature match with John Moore and uh, Louis Fasikas. John being one of the top seeded players in the tournament and Louis is a uh, an excellent player from Sudbury. Been competing in nine ball and snooker for about 25 years now. The score stands at one all and uh, Johnny Moore is going to check the rack make sure that uh, everything is tight the tighter the balls the better the balls explode and therefore give you a better chance at actually making one crunch Classic Johnny Moore break, he hit it hard, hit the one right on the nose, and parked the cue ball right in the center of the table. Um, it got kicked down toward the, the head string by another ball, but uh, he did everything that he needed to do to uh, execute a quality break shot. Well, someone said hi to me, the Emo Racer. Hi, Emo Racer. How are things in Cyberland? Oh, well, Johnny just uh, hooked Louie behind the six. Uh, giving him not a terribly difficult out. Looks like a one-railer. So, Emo Racer... Uh, What's your real name, anyways? Louie hit it, but was unfortunate enough to go in off.
Well, it looks like John's going to opt for the 2-9 the combo and uh, try and end the game immediately as uh, opposed to trying to run out. Break there for Louis. He, he missed the combo. I uh, wonder if uh, Louis is going to draw back. It looks like he is. He's digging on the cue ball. Sure did, and success for Louis Physique is well done. They'll rack the balls, and uh, Louis gets a notch in his gun. The tournament organizers have decided to use the magic rack in all the pool events this year. First time ever. Um, I think it's a good idea because uh, with the magic rack you can get uh, the balls tighter and um, you can also do it faster because they all sit in small impressions on the, on the plastic rack and it, it really uh, makes the game more enjoyable because you don't have to dilly dally with uh, the racking of the balls. Just use the patented Cory Dual soft break. Made it look quite easy actually that the, the wing ball or the corner ball, as we call it, nine ball, um, went directly in the, uh, the corner pocket. And uh, the. Scores who's leading? It's 2 1. 2 1 Louis. So it's Louis. So all you hear, it's already there. So Louis, you just backspace 2. And then the arrow. Sorry, I don't know where you're looking. We'll bring you up to uh, to Johnny. So it's 2 1. Mm -hmm. So yeah, whenever it goes, I usually just leave it there. And then all you have to do is just down arrow or up arrow. Just move to the number backspace and you can put the score in. Okay. I'll see if I can. Uh, just getting some instructions here from Rob on how to. Uh, operate the scoring. I'm going to be doing the commentary for you for a while. Some good matches going on in the pit today. I see uh, Jason Williams over there just breaking the balls on table 23 against uh, Derek Waters. Derek's a uh, Canadian snooker champion from Sask Saskatoon. And uh, Jason's one of the better players to come out of the Hamilton area. Someone online's been asking if there's any updates and who won that match there? Jesse Piercy just defeated Dave Parker, Hill Hill, on table 21. Opted to go rail first and try and kick the one in. Likely a clever shot because all she had to do was contact the the one ball and, and it would have dropped and would have had cinch position on the two as well. It's very worthwhile option.
tables that are sitting like this, uh, all six balls at one end of the table are supposed to be foregone conclusions for a player like Johnny Moore. I mean, your chances of getting a shot uh, are quite low. I mean, Someone's asking me about the, the Maloney match, but I'm um, sorry, I don't know. Pardon me? Oh, the Maloney match, uh, some fellow just informed me, uh, is 3 2. We're not sure, sure who for, but uh, okay. We're finding out right now. And uh, I'll keep you updated on uh, any match score you wish to know about. Oh, he's a really tall fellow. Who's Miss Eight Ball? Is that you, Marcy? Haha, <laughs> hi, Marcy. Well, sure enough, Johnny's dropped the eight. He's shooting the money ball. As pool players call it. An eight ball, the money ball would be the eight, and ten ball, the money ball's ten. Well, Johnny Moore's three favorite sounds. Tip hitting the cue ball, cue ball hitting the object ball, and the object ball hitting the pocket. Andrew Opeth from Sudbury is playing on table 26. His match is one all. And I believe he's playing Justin Kuzmik from Mississauga. Justin is, a, is an improved player. Um, earlier in the week, he defeated Jason Klatt in the eight ball tournament. Uh, perhaps the, the best match of his career. And Johnny's turn to break. I ha I haven't seen Johnny Mora miss break the whole tournament. Every break has had lots of power, uh, deadly accuracy, and uh, he's making a lot of balls. I rest my case. He uh, just hit the break shot dead to rights. Unfortunately for him, he didn't uh, he didn't get lucky. The five is obstructing the two balls, so he's forced to play safe on the shot and instead of having a run out opportunity. for me to give updates because um, from where I sit I can't see all the scores. a habit of missing easy kick shots like that. That's supposed to be fairly routine for players at his level and um, giving a guy like John Moore a cue ball in hand with six balls on the table is uh, almost always resulting in a loss. 
Yeah, someone says I need a rubber a runner to get the scores. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Maloney's match is 3 all. Someone just informed me. Derek Waters is shooting an 8. Pardon me, a 7. With an easy 8-9 combo. To end that game. Tables look like they're playing just a little sluggish today, uh, perhaps the result of uh, some of the rain that we've been experiencing. It, it, um, it gets into the cloth and really slows things down. See Johnny Moore there uh, using a, a, a loop bridge or a closed bridge with his two middle fingers folded in. Some players have actually adopted his style and tried using it in recent Yes, Alex did win his snooker match last night. Someone just asked me. Um, I'm not sure the score. I th it, I believe it was four nothing though for Alex Pagulian. Some good matches in the snooker today. Uh, Jeff White is playing John White at 6 p.m. If anyone's interested in coming down. Oh, I just uh, heard now Alex beat, uh, someone saying Alex beat Dean Fury 4-1, so they're keeping track of things nicely for me. Eric Horlifson on table 24 looks like he's in a close affair. People are wondering exactly how many events Alex can win this year. He's, he's already won the eight ball. He's poised to win the nine ball. He's in the last four players on the A side, so he'll he'll take uh, a bit of stomping out. He's uh, the pre-tournament favorite to win the the snooker. Uh, who is this guy, anyways? <laughs> Well, I, I can tell you who he is in, in a few words. He's, he may be, or probably is, I should say, uh, the best all-round Canadian billiard player ever. I'm calling him Canadian because uh, he came here when he was a young teenager. He, he's a Canadian citizen, and uh, this is where he learned uh, to play most of his, uh, his pool.
Yes, he wants them all. <laughs> Has a lot of desire to win. Well, Louis, a little straighter on the the four ball than he cares to be. It's the cue ball is off the rail another two to four inches. It'd be a lot easier to get on the five, but uh, well, that's what happens right there when you have a tricky shot to play. You can find yourself in a bad spot. And now he's hooked and he's forced to kick at it. Yo-yo cue ball guys asking me he's probably what? No, I'm just saying that uh, Alex is probably uh, considered by most to be the best all-round billiard player ever to come out of Canada. He's world nine-ball champion, Canadian sticker champion, U.S. Open nine-ball champion, countless other titles. I can't, can't even begin to name them all. He can basically play any game with a cue. Johnny Mora looks his like his usual steady, just keeps his head down. Smooth strokes everything in the hole. Nice system. Oh, don't tell me. Wow, a very rare error by Johnny Mora not to hit the ball hard enough. Just missed a routine shot on the eight. Um, things aren't looking that good for Louis. He's missed uh, a couple of easy opportunities. Uh, I mean, you just can't do that when you're playing at a high level like this. I mean, when you get good chances, you you have to make the best of them, or I mean the game um, it just punishes you. You run, you run out of chances. Johnny drains the nine. Out comes the magic rack and goes ahead four games to two. Oh. Four to two for uh, oh, back space. Huh? Okay, okay. Rob's coming in. Talk to you folks later. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep on with the wood show for a while. <laughs> Let them hear a pro for a change. Four to four to two for John Mora. When do you ever get a Canadian nine ball champ commentating? And Johnny's wearing a glove. 
Yeah, Johnny has a glove on. He hasn't worn a glove all week. A silk glove, perhaps because of humidity, it uh, allows a player to stroke the cue with less effort. And he got paid again. If anyone wants to learn how to break the balls, uh, it's perhaps advisable to study a guy like John Mora. Just so good at it. He's spent countless hours uh, practicing the shot, and it's all paid off. Oh, a decent shot there by Johnny. Back cut the three, billiard to seven, stay, stayed for the four. Very important in uh, any pool game to keep an angle so you can use the rails to manufacture your position. It's when you get straight that you have to force the cue ball around the table to get position. It's actually more difficult. Things are not looking so well for our friend Louie. He's down 5 2. He, he better turn things around quick. He'll find himself in a very deep hole. Louis checks the rack, make sure they're nice and tight. The magic rack, most of the time the balls are tight, but uh, for all the time it takes, uh, it doesn't hurt to check.
Tanya will be kicking at the back reel here. It's uh be interesting to see what speed he goes at the two at. Whether he lobs it or tries to hit it hard. There's our answer there. He wanted to put some distance between the cue ball and the two. And Rolling up can, can be good at times, but the problem is, is uh, you leave the cue ball close to the object ball and it can leave your opponent with an easier shot. Louis not sure what to do here. It looks like he's going for a jump cue. Maybe jump the 5-7 and hopefully pocket the two ball. I've just been informed that we have a good matchup at 6 p.m. Uh, Jason Klatt versus Jason Thomas. If anybody would like to come down to the room and watch that, they'll see a good match. Johnny didn't come out as nicely as he wanted to on the floor ball. Likely be playing safe here. The cut on the floor in the corner being so thin, it seems like more of a sensible thing to do. Excellent shot by Johnny. He has Louie almost glued behind the nice nine ball. Well, looks like a two railer for Louie. Little high, high outside spin. Went too short. And Johnny always looks so relaxed when he shoots. Nice way to play the game. What's his name? Oh. I've just been informed that uh, the score in the Colin Maloney match is 6 4 for Colin Maloney. Pardon me, 7-4 for Jason.
And Johnny goes up 6-2. I think he's only missed one shot this match. The ball of the, I think it was the four ball that he under hit in the corner. Most of these matches are won by the player who misses the least amount of balls. Even more than the person who, who breaks better. I think sometimes that's a little overrated, uh, the break shot. Johnny pushes out to the end rail. Gives Louie a long shot. Bit of a tester of a shot this is. Excellent shot by Louie. And has a bit of a back cut on the three, but a nice shot just the same. Well, he puts his cue down in disappointment. He'd rather be straighter on the three so he could shoot it in the corner pocket. He, he may even be playing safe here. Gorgeous shot by Louis in off the eight ball, draws to the side rail, back into the center of the table for a good shot at the four. Well done. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Louis not liking it. He's, uh... He's just missing too many shots that uh, that he he that he needs to make uh, to to beat a guy like this. I mean, uh, so often a, a miss like that results in a, a loss instead of a win. <clears throat> Eric Horlifson. Uh, I can't see what's going on on his table. It looks like it's about 4-2 or 4-3 for somebody. I'm not sure who. They're at the other end of the room on table 24. Seven two Johnny Moore.
Well, Johnny Moore has a way of shaking players up because uh, they know if they miss, um, they're going to get punished. So it really makes the game that much harder to play. the soft break, parked the cue ball, only to have the cue ball kicked down the table by the five. Uh, he's going right for his jump cue. Says he'll have no part of a push out. Then almost made the pot on the two in the side and got a nice break hooking Johnny behind the seven ball. It pours for Louie. Johnny tried to kick that in off the side rail and float off two rails for a shot in the three. Missed the pocketing attempt and uh, and hooked Louie behind the nine. It's uh, just the way it goes in nine ball. Almost made it in the corner. <laughs> uh, we'll see what kind of uh, shot Johnny plays here, whether he tries to draw the cue ball back or just stops dead and plays the hole between the, the seven and eight. Give him some kind of a, a shot at the three. Oh, he tried to draw back. Good shot by Louie. Just the right way. Gave him a hook behind the four ball. Someone's asking about the Billy and Jeff score. What's it, what's the score? Four one Jeff Robson. Well, Louis getting his chances this game. He uh, he better not be long taking advantage of them. He'll find himself in a dire situation.
when we kind of tried to go up and down with the cue ball. He got a favorable horn, giving himself a nice straight and shot on the three. Just what the doctor ordered for Louie. Rob was just informing me that uh, he's going to do a, starting at 9 in the morning, he's going to broadcast the, the snooker until the, the B side and the 9 ball starts. And Louis wins his third game. he has to put on a bit of a flourish here if he wants to be a contender in this match. The problem is when you're playing alternating a break and you find yourself in a hole, it's hard to get out of it because you can't run racks. Break for Louis. Johnny had a bit of a tough shot on that two on the side there. He's, the two was a little closer to the rail than he would like it to have been. The opening up of the pocket not being very big. just informed that uh, the score in the Eric Horlison match is 5-3 for Eric. Jason Williams? Oh, and in the Jason Robichaux match it's 8-6 for Jason. There's two in a row for Louie. He manages to stay afloat. 
Seven four. John Mora over Louis Fazekas. Johnny's careful with the rack there to make sure that the balls are racked the way he likes them. Nice break by Louis. Turn nine ball into six ball. Always a good thing to do. Johnny's playing a, uh, a billiard from one yellow ball to the next, or... Oh, an in-off. Wow. Very nice. If he left the uh, one ball near the corner pocket, he would have had a hook, too. Very smart shot. Eight four Johnny Mora.
No, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay, go. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ron's gonna take over the uh, live stream for you. Nice talking to you folks, and I'll see you soon. So what everybody? Thanks a lot, my friend. Get you some pro commentating there. While I went to uh, deal with some things. Hey, Marcy, I'm going to throw you back in blue, girl. I notice you're uh, not in your color. No, you're in your color. All right, it is eight to four. For Johnny, and as he said, uh, you notice he's wearing a glove. It is getting really humid and sticky in here. Uh, I believe this is probably the first time I've ever seen Johnny wear a glove. Uh, I know when uh, Shane first started putting on his glove, uh, when I was asking him about it, he said it all started when he was down in, uh, I think it was uh, Indonesia or something like that. He said the pl it was so hot, like even the, the powder would cake on your hand. So he started wearing a glove and won that tournament and has won everything else since. Nice shot there by Lewis. Yeah, he was asking Rob if you want to do by the game or set. Yeah, that's what I told him. I go, it doesn't matter to him, so. So I'm sure Chris Woods told you guys, tomorrow you're going to have a full day of snooker, guys, until about 2 o'clock. Uh, then I'm going to jump on to B-side finals and A-side finals of the nine ball. So, uh, yeah, it'll be the last day of the round robin. So I know I promised to give you guys a full day of snooker. I'm going to do it. So be looking forward to that. Uh, that's right there, Corny. I played with a glove once when I was uh, playing in the singles in Vegas in 2005. Sorry, one second. talking to Mr. John Croft there. Now he's just keeping me up to date about uh, the whole Ustream situation. Uh, we have the lawyer for the APA looking into it. For brackets, www.cbsa.ca. Uh-oh, we've had an accident. Someone broke something. Hey, thanks a lot there, Mercy. Yeah, we need to get all our video back. Yeah, Grace Nakamir has just given a warning that players have been putting... Uh, drinks along the railing and some of the fans have been kicking them over. Samantha Kraft, what's up? All right, it's 8-4 John Moore here. 11. It's a race to 11. Hit that share button, everybody. Nope, you're banned. No, none of you guys. I was talking to Jeff Robson. You guys are all good. And we still are raffling off uh, Jeff Robson's cues. Right now, Rob Skull has a high speed at $2. Oh, $3.01, sorry. He just won the uh, the amateur nine ball too, guys. <laughs> it got to be worth something. <laughs> it got to be worth something. <laughs> 
Uh oh, Marcy's got 302. <laughs> oh, Courtney's got a fin. Bidding will close at midnight tonight. No, we're not raffling off this cues. Oh, Cooper said it's overpriced. Hey, but Coop, the guy won the amateur nine ball, so this should be worth something. All right, it's eight five. Kevin Jones, what's going on? Welcome aboard. Yeah, gotta get some H2O, man. It's hot in here. And the action is hot, too. Thank you. That's good to hear, Kevin. Hit that share button, everybody. It's good to see uh, all the regular faces on the new site. This is uh, my personal channel here, Old TV Builder Productions. Also, if anyone's interested in any uh, live streaming, you can uh, contact me on Facebook. Uh, I'm also going to get uh, information for anyone who's interested in getting lessons from Eric Olofsson. I'll get an email for you guys. All right, Kevin, you're off the hook, buddy. Yeah, it should be hot there in Texas Hillbilly. 95, wow. Now we're about 80 here. We had a nasty rainstorm this morning. And then it just seemed right after that. The humidity just came right up. Uh, Eric is living in Toronto. Uh, this is his home room, just like John Mora and some of the other pros that are here. We have a great Monday uh, Pro-Am tournament here that they run. Uh, they also run uh, a Wednesday uh, a pro am, I believe, too, and Saturday is an amateur event. Yeah, and one of the reasons why Johnny's wearing a glove there, it's just it's gotten so humid down in the pit. It's like sticky, man. You use powder, it just cakes up on you. There you go, buddy. Make some cash, kid. Good luck, Rob. Yeah, I wore one once, uh, like I was saying, when I was in Vegas for a tournament. And uh, I just don't feel comfortable with it. I know I was mentioning, like, Shane used it when he was in Indonesia there. He's had problems queuing up. It was just so humid. And he won that event and has been wearing it ever since. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I know a lot of players, more and more now, you're seeing a lot of players starting to wear that glove. Rack nine for Johnny. And then uh, as soon as uh, I get some in... Yeah, it is true there, Hillbilly. Um, it's, it's saved from wearing powder. I don't put a lot of powder on my hand like some people where, you know, all you look at the table and it's handprints. Uh, I'm sort of like Alex, just tap it a bit and just get it in my groove, but I just like that feel, I guess. I don't know, it's just weird. Uh, I know my girlfriend wears her glove. 
But I know for some players they have a sweat glands problem in their hand and powders just doesn't work. So they'll go and use the glove. Rack number 15. John Moore to break. John Moore lead a 9-5. Yeah, and you can. And that's when I was using a lot of... I mostly play with a loop bridge now. But yeah, you can really get it good, hard, uh, firm, closed bridge when you use a glove. And I love the closed bridge. I know some of the uh, lower ranked players in my league, when I give them a bit of lessons, I'm trying to teach them to get used to that loop bridge. I know it feels really uncomfortable for them at first. It's just like riding a bike. You have to have training wheels. So uh, you just get used to it. And I'm starting to notice a lot more of the lower handicap league players that are starting to use a closed bridge. And they're controlling the cue ball a lot much better. And the stick doesn't have, the cue doesn't have a tendency of lifting up when you go through. Especially for power. Uh, you're right there, he'll believe you just put it in. Because you can really get a good stroke. When you have that open bridge trying to hit something hard, you have that tendency of the cue lifting up off your hand. And then as soon as uh, some of the matches are over on this B side, I'll get a list of matches uh, that are going to be scheduled, and you guys can pick who you want to see. Today is uh, is you guys pick your matches, guys. So yeah, I'm going to let uh, all you fans out there dictate what matches we're going to be showing today. And then tomorrow, we're going to have a full day of snooker. I'll be here from 9 a.m. We'll get some matches for you. At the winner's side tonight at 6 p.m., we're showing Jason Klatt, Jason Thomas. Jason Thomas has just been defeating everybody. He put Mario Moore on the B-side. He put Eric Wolfson on the B-side. A side matches are 6 p.m. tonight. And then tomorrow, uh, 3 o'clock, we will have the B side finals for the nine ball. And then we'll have the nine ball finals. I believe it's scheduled for 6 30. So I'll be giving you a full day tomorrow of, uh, of the last round robin matches for the snooker before the semi final, uh, B side finals. Yeah, Alex versus Dave Martin is the other 6 a uh, 6 p.m. match. Yeah, Clout will be on the stream 6 p.m. guys. Let Sarah know. Sure, she's gonna want to see her hubby. Yeah, that's a good shot by Jay. That's perfect on the four. Yeah, you got that right there, Hillbilly. Yep. Sarah and Jason. You ever get a chance to play Clat there, Hillbilly? You guys meet up in any events? Johnny puts down the Nina 9. How you fare? It's a great player. You're no slouch yourself, my friend. Hey, all right, you got him up one. Atta boy. You going to be at the U.S. Open this year? Hey, I'm going to see you down there, buddy. I'm coming down. If I don't see you in... uh. Tanuska, I'll see you down at the U.S. Open, buddy. But I think I will be making it down to uh, Tanuska. I just got to talk to Croft. I know he's going down. Um, I was scheduled to be uh, running an event uh, July 28th, 29th, but due to certain uh, situations, I think I'm going to be uh, canceling that event. 
I just got to talk to uh, certain people about certain situations. But, yeah, it'd be great to meet you too, my friend, instead of doing this over the phone and uh, chatting. I'll bring my streaming equipment. Maybe we can put a video together. All right. It's a bet. Lewis, it's the one. Just got a good shot on the two. Kirk Stevens was a 4 nothing winner today. John Everett in one 4 nothing. 6 p.m. tonight, Jeff White, John White on the snooker table. I think the other guys will have it for us. That's what they're going to be known as now, the other guys. Oh, Lewis is a great player. Always f fares well in uh, these events. It just seems that he's ran on a man on a mission. Uh, I didn't get to see too much of the match. Uh, good friend Chris Wood was Chris Wood was doing our commentating for us. Yeah, they got any snooker tables or snooker halls there in Texas? I don't know if there's many snooker rooms in the U.S. at all. Oh, it's a great shot on the three. Lays good on the four. Depending on his angle, you can play the six in the bottom left, bottom right. Boogies has a 12-footer. A lot of guys play down there. In Houston. No, that's nah, too bad. It's a great game. You know, I remember there used to be tons of snooker tables here in Canada, and now it just seems it's gone to nine foots. A lot of these younger kids aren't, you know, don't pick up the game. It just looks real confusing for them. And also, I guess, you know, the table time. If you don't really understand the game or not that good, it can get expensive. One frame could probably take you two hours. I remember when the VIP billiards by my house, they used to uh, be strictly snooker only. Now I think they only got four snooker tables. There was a lot of 10-footers back then, wasn't there, Charlie? Was It, it was a 5 by 10 wasn't it? This is a, well, he's at the 50-yard line. Oh, congratulations, buddy. Nah. Yeah, that's what I heard, uh, Corny, that out, uh, it's a lot of bar box pool down there, or out there. Uh, here it seems in Ontario it's more uh, a lot more nine footers. Although a lot of the rooms do have bar boxes, but it just seems everyone really likes to play the nine footers. Don't Lewis gets one back, ten six. I will get you some bonus coverage as soon as we're done. He played with ten cherries. Now still a hell of an accomplishment. I'll see it pick up the match on table. Uh, hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of good matches going on right now. Oh, it would be good to get the Justin and Andy Payne match. Uh, but unfortunately, the table they're on, I can't get to. And he'll be saying in Texas, they play a, on a lot of eight-footers. We don't got too many eight-footers here in Canada. Well, I shouldn't say in Canada. I know in the uh, Toronto area. Uh, I 
I think maybe some of the little bars got a few eight foots, but uh, it's mostly four and a half by nines and uh, four and a half by seven bar boxes. Oh, I bet it was an awesome feeling. I remember the first time I made a black plane snooker. I was going nuts. Shannon the cannon. Hey, what haven't you told me there, Kevin? You guys want a trip to Vegas? In that room, hey, that's way to go, Hillbilly. They still got your picture of you when you were a kid in there? It's tough to run a perfect game in snooker. Like, you look at all the top players we have here. I don't think even in a practice no one's run a, a perfect game. I know Alex came close. He missed a black in one of his practice matches. Oh, you don't even know if they're still open, eh? That's too bad. I hate to hear any room close down. But it's such a tough business. Mario Moore in the house. Mario's got a match up coming. Great to see Mario Mora plugging away still. Yeah, they tend to do that, buddy. That was a great shot. Now, I remember last year I was playing a guy in Vegas. Uh, some nine ball action on the bar box. and uh, Or no, sorry, some eight ball action on a bar box. And uh, I knew the guy kind of looked familiar. Um... He's a former world junior champion. This guy put an eight pack on me like it was nobody's business. Yeah, this guy could play, man. Uh, Rob, I think his name was Rob Hall. Not our Rob Hall, but uh, Rob Hall from the States. Uh, I think he's sponsored by Predator or something. He won a world juniors title or something like that. What a beast of a player, man. And he was just running rack after rack. And that's something I love watching when I'm down in uh, Vegas. I love watching the wheelchair pool. Oh, man. Some of these guys play. Whew. No, I almost wish I could play in a wheelchair. You see the table so much better. Your angles and oh, And the way some of these guys maneuver in the chair, they prop up on one wheel. and oh, It's such a pleasure. I can't remember... Uh, his last name. His name is Charlie. You might know him, Hillbilly. Uh, I can't remember his last name. He's in a wheelchair now. He's just unbelievable player. He's always in uh, Sandusky, Ohio for one of the tournaments they have there. Uh, Charlie something. I can't remember his last name. Uh, he's always in Vegas. He's always up there for the wheelchair pool. Uh, even before he was in the wheelchair, he was a hell of a road player. Um, supposedly he was at a tournament and he was sleeping in his car to save money and a drunk driver rear-ended him. 
He's lucky to even be alive. Yeah, hustling. It is, uh... Is it Charlie Hands? <sighs> some reason, it's, uh... Not sure if that's his last name. I'll find out. There's a few people uh, that are going to be coming by that know him. Aaron that runs racks. Yeah, there's there's a lot of great players. Wheelchairs that run racks. Lewis gets another one back. 10-7. Uh, my handicap for CPA, uh, I'm a 7 in 9 ball. And, and basically say I'm a 7 in 8 ball. We got booted again. Back in blue. Although I haven't been playing like a 7 and 8 ball. I just haven't had time to hit any balls. I've been streaming nonstop. When we had our regionals, I think I played uh, one good match against Brian Bellabratic uh, in a sudden death match to move our team on to the next. Uh, yeah, you're a 7 and 8 ball. All right, Hillbilly. Times that by four. Oh, is it, Marcy? The, maybe it's coming our way. I know we had some bad weather here this morning. Hey, don't worry. When I go down to meet Hillbilly, I'm going to uh, bring my streaming equipment. Me and Hillbilly are going to have a match. We're going to stream a match somehow. We'll figure something out. I'll take a couple games on the wire. I don't like no ball spots. I don't think that's fair. Oh, I love that saying. Uh... I haven't really played a 404 event. Um, the problem was is that every time they had an event here at Shooters, uh, I've been either refereeing or doing an event for the CPA. Um, when I played on the 10K tour, I was a 6. Uh, so I'd probably be a 6 or a 7 in the 404. I won't tell you what I play as at Shooters. Only Leo knows because it's torture. You're a four. Hustlin's a three. Only females can be three there, Hustlin. Hey, look forward to meeting ya. Yeah. You're right. He's got to get below the, uh, the two. This is no cakewalk. Yeah, see Johnny Hyde here, I think. Unless he's going to play with a lot of right. Try to get back up for the 3 5. Oh, play the safe, which is a smarter shot. Freeze on that 6. Nice shot. And that's what I try to tell a lot of players that I'm teaching is uh, when you want to get close to a ball, you get as frozen to that ball as you can. Those rail to rail shots, someone could pull out a jump cue, is no good. But if you can really stick someone on a ball, they have to kick. You're forcing them to kick. Especially a lot of these guys who uh, pull out jump jump cues. Uh, they they tend to forget how to kick shot, kick balls. Uh, Kevin Jones asked me, "Do I play as shooters?" Yeah. Uh, my uh, team is out of uh, VIP billiards, but uh, we rotate between uh, VIP billiards and uh, and shooters. Actually, uh, I'm supposed to be playing a Masters match tonight, but uh, I don't think I'm going to make it in time because I'll be with all you guys. But my team's okay. They can handle it. Yeah, that's cool. We got our uh, we have a Masters league on Tuesday night. 
which I really enjoy playing because you get to play a lot of the uh, the strong players. Nothing against the low handicaps, but you tend not to try too much when you're playing lower end players. I tend to get into the point where I do more teaching with the lower ends than actually playing. But that's why I'm, you know, I love this game and he's going to hook himself behind the four. No, I looked him on the five. Just hit that way too hard. You know, I love teaching myself. Uh, anything to help people, you know, and, and try to get this sport going. Have I ever played Jay Goyer? You know, I'm Moneyball, I'm really bad with names sometimes, man. Micromita, yeah, I've met Micromita. I know Wayne Small and all those guys. Nope, never played that. Uh, it doesn't really sound like the league for me. Although, you know, I'm sure they put out a great product. Oh, that's ball in hand. Five never hit the rail. Yeah, Mike's not a bad player. Yeah, I used to play uh, VNEA uh, a while ago in a Mustang pool league. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still around. I know VNEA is. I'm not sure if the Mustang is, but I think it is. Well, it looks like John's got everything here. Just come off that long rail, back out for the five. Same pocket. Uh, Gord Baycroft. Doesn't sound familiar, my friend. I Probably by face. You know, you tend to hear a lot of names. Uh, I remember players. I probably know a hundred people, players, that I don't know what their names are, but... If I see them, I could tell you everything about their game. When I first started playing pool, I uh, I used to keep a notebook on every player that I played when I first started playing leagues. And I would keep notes on, okay, did they like banks? They didn't like long shots. They didn't like this. They didn't like that. So I kept doing that. And I still tend to do it. So now when I see a player, I tend to know what his strengths and weaknesses are. And it's something that a lot of people... I think should do keep little cheat sheets on your opponents especially league players you're gonna play these guys all the time and if you can find out what their weaknesses are in a ball box eventually you're gonna start beating these guys because you're gonna know the shots they don't like hey pool player Nick what's going on buddy yeah he came way short on that Oh, yeah, we had uh, problems there, Nick. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to divulge in it no more. Uh, sure, if people on the chat can let you know what happened, or you can see on my Facebook. Obviously, that's probably where you found the link. Uh, bank 8 to side rail. And he's going to sell the farm. No, he got a decent little kiss here. Now I wonder if you just roll on the 8. Uh, let's cut it, try to get the cue ball back behind the nine. John's just getting ready to shoot. Yeah, I think he did kind of get away with it. But he does have a good save. He can just roll the cue ball on the eight, or he can even just bring the eight back up to the top of the table and try to get that cue ball back behind the nine. Yeah, that's it, Hillbilly. Bank that eight to the top rail, get that cue ball back behind the nine. And that's what he was doing. Just to think a little light. Yeah, you almost pulled it off there. Yeah, Billy. Just need to get another couple more rotations on that cue ball. I saw you post something up here a second.
Yeah, I sound like Bill Dunn. Billy Dunn? Why does that name sound familiar? That name sounds so familiar. Maybe it's just someone nice. He's a player himself, isn't he, Hillbilly? Is he a road player at all, or... Billy Dunn, that name sounds so familiar. Uh, there's probably a lot of them. Maybe that's why. It's from Chicago. Shout out to Championship Cloth from Chicago. Oh, good shot. And he plays too. Yeah, that name sounds familiar. Ten eight. Croft shaking his head at me. No, I didn't see it. I was looking at the chat. Hey, they all count though. Skinny black headed gentleman. Hmm. Yeah, that flu kept him in the match. John just has not, uh, John just hasn't looked comfortable so far in this nine ball event. He was really strong in the eight ball, but just ran into Alex. And, you know, it's tough when you get a guy like him. You know, he's a tough player to beat, man. That's the break. That's the break that might have broke Lewis's back. The glove. There's actually a really cool video if uh, you guys want to see it. It's uh, with Alex and Shane. Some of you guys might have saw it already on YouTube. Um, I believe it's under Alex versus Shane at Shooters. It was when we were doing uh, The Clash. Uh, I was doing an interview with Alex, and uh, he, Shane ended up getting in the discussion about where he ranked, where he thought Shane ranked in the States. And uh, if you guys want to go check it out, it is hilarious. And you'll just see how much love Alex has for Shane Van Boning. Uh, I believe it's on uh, YouTube. You go to uh, uh, Alex versus Shane at Shooters. Uh, you'll actually get to see me on the mic there with JR. And uh, it's a hilarious piece of video. You have to go check that out. And you'll just see the respect that those two players have for each other. And it's actually the first time you'll ever see Shane with a drink in his hand. Yeah, that's one thing Shane said when he came up here his first time in Canada. He's, uh, or first time in Toronto, he's like, damn, he goes, you Canadians like your beer and your karaoke. Because I guess Alex Peggy Lyon had him at the uh, karaoke club for a week straight. Yeah, shout out to JR, man. He's a great, great person. Nice shot by Johnny. Well, he's left himself a tester on the eight here. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Owning Mahoney. That's where that line came from. Winner, winner, chicken dinner came from Owning Mahoney. Not sure if any of you guys saw that movie. And that's the match, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so if all of you want to know where that, that uh, line came from, winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's a movie called Owning Mahoney about a Canadian who worked at, uh, I believe it was Royal Bank in Toronto. And uh, he's a degenerate gambler, and he would open up, uh, give out fake loans and go to casinos and gamble. And then when he'd come back, he would pay off the loans. And his, uh, he would just get a larger, larger account. So when he was, in, uh, he was in Vegas, he was on a huge run on a crap table. I think he was up $3 million. And every time he won big, he would get a chicken dinner. So when he was up big the next time, he had this one uh, gentleman that was watching him around, said, oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. 
And uh, yeah, he ended up being up something like $3 million. He actually broke the casino in uh, Atlantic City. Ended up giving it all back. It's a true story. It's a great movie. It's called Owning Mahoney. Uh, uh, is it Dustin Hoffman, I think, is in it. Great movie. Worth, uh, very well worth to watch. And that's when a lot of the bank laws changed in Canada with the uh, with loans. All right, guys.